For my entrepreneur project, I interviewed Dean Purdy on his contracting and home remodeling business. It was an interesting experience to learn more about a family friend's business. I was fortunate enough to interview him in the middle of one of his kitchen remodels. I work for a uh, carpenter contractor, uh, probably in the mid 80s, and another friend of mine and I were doing quite a bit of decks on the side, and then we picked up uh, several condominiums that the builder went bankrupt on, and uh, they were framed, but that was it, and they needed to be drywall, the electrical, everything from that point forward to finish those, and those were the first jobs that we took on as a business. You know, it's kind of a process. Um, when I was working for other people, um, I worked around several different, say, electricians or plumbers, and I could see ones that did quality work as opposed to ones that were just in such a hurry trying to get out of there, and I was always there after they were gone, so when there was issues, callbacks and those types of things. I was involved in those. Um, so based on that, I would always choose the contractors that I used um, by the quality of work that they did. Because I don't want the headaches and the homeowner doesn't want the headaches. Yeah. So, you know, when it's done right, you know, you use a quality contractor, even if he's a little more expensive, um, it's worth it to make sure that the job's done right. As a business, you know, an LLC separates everything that I have personally from what I own as my family. So if there was ever a legal matter or something of that nature, they could come after my business and its assets, but not my personal assets, my home vehicles. For me, most of the startup capital um, I didn't have to go buy a lot of, I didn't have to have a big initial investment because I had accumulated all my tools, my vehicles, as I was working for someone else. Um, so for us, we really didn't have to have a big lump sum. If you were not a carpenter at all and you were going into this and you had to go buy a vehicle with all of the tools, you know, then you would have to come up with 20, 30,000 depending on what you're buying. And I fortunately didn't have to do that because I had been in it for a while and investing all along. So I guess I didn't have to have that big chunk of money to start. You know, uh, it was a lot of years probably just uh, because this field um, fluctuates so much. You know, there's still years, just a couple of years ago, when the economy, all the housing went away. You know, we lost my probably my pay was cut in about half. So I, in this trade, uh, your your income fluctuates constantly with the economy. So some years you'll make more, some years you make less. Uh, my wife worked, which really helped to stabilize the income that we did make. So I mean, you know, it took several years, and I mean, there's still years that I can go and not make much money. You know, we had some air, um, times where we were very slow in business early on. Um, we would tackle a lot of jobs from putting in windows to siding to roofing, um, things that we didn't necessarily specialize in. So because we don't do those every day, we aren't as fast. Um, so we don't make as much money on those, but you have to do those jobs to keep yourself afloat so you have some income coming in, and those were difficult. As you can see here today, my, it, it fluctuates quite a bit, because originally we weren't going to receive cabinets until tomorrow, and they called and said they were ready today, so, um, you know, typically when I get up in the morning, I'll check emails, I'll reply to some that I can, um, and then I'll head out to the job site. Yesterday we had the electrician here, uh, Monday we came and we tore all the cabinets out, cut the drywall out of the walls, and um, so the electrician could do all his wiring. And now uh, cabinets are all being delivered today, so we'll want to get the drywall covered up, uh, put a coat of drywall mud on there, uh, so that tomorrow we can start setting these cabinets. We have templated coming for granted on Monday. And, you know, every job is a little 
different, you know. We've got a basement to start framing. Um, so there we're going to have to deliver lumber and we'll be doing all the framework. Um, pretty much depends on the job, I guess. Uh, depending on the size of the project or our holes in the project, you know, it could be five projects, it could be one, depending on the size of it. To see the before compared to the after finish, that's the most gratifying to me. And then the uh, homeowner's response, you know, to be able to, uh, I guess, build their dream or, you know, whatever their uh, goal was and to make that happen, that's the most rewarding for me. And risks that we've taken sometimes are financial, you know, uh, hiring subcontractors, for instance, and getting what you're paying for. Um, there's always safety risk, um, especially um, when I'm in jobs like this, in interior work, flat on the floor, you know, your risk of getting injured are marginally less than if I'm on a roof or something outside, you know, you're in the mud, you're carrying heavy beams or that type of thing. So there's always a risk of physical injury. Um, and over the years I've kind of learned how to avoid the really high risk areas there. Those are probably the biggest things, um, you know, and then you, you always run the risk of not making money if you're not doing your job efficiently and, you know, uh, communicating with the customer, communicating with your subcontractors so things are getting done on time. Sometimes customers uh, don't know exactly what they want. They want to do something and um, so we discuss different ideas. With the internet now they can do a lot of research, find pictures, and pictures are really helpful. Um, so usually uh, if the customer has some trust into my judgment and they've looked at some of my work, um, I can help steer them. To be conservative with the money that you make um, because I've seen so many people that do what I do and they always assume that tomorrow is going to be better than today. So if they made 50000 this year, the next year they're going to make 60000 And so many of those guys, when this recent economy, three years, two years ago when the economy went south, those guys are no longer in business because they basically spent everything that they've made as they get it. So I think to um, be very conservative with the money that you make and always, you know, have some money put away for when it gets bad. So the worst advice, I don't know if it was actually advice that someone has given me or if it's just something I've learned over time because uh, by the same token, saving your money and being conservative with it has, I had even some friends that I've done business be, uh, in years past who don't manage their money when they get it. They spend the money and not necessarily on the job and then when it comes time to paying me for the work that I've done or paying for materials, there's no money left. And because of that, I've been stung a few times and not been paid. And on those situations, uh, you don't forget that. And I think that you learn pretty quick uh, to avoid doing that. After having previous experience working with contractors, Mr. Purdy began his own LLC by partnering up with the most efficient workers he could find and finishing projects his old employer could not due to bankruptcy. Mr. Purdy was fortunate when it came to acquiring a startup capital since he was supplied with his own business equipment previously, he didn't need any initial investment since he had been investing all along. It took Mr. Purdy a few years to begin making a profit with his type of work in the state of economy. Mr. Purdy faces many financial and safety risks, but his business succeeds mostly by word of mouth. He enjoys the freedom of time an entrepreneur has, although he has had to single-handedly deal with many difficult customers. His work days aren't the same each and every day and depend on the, his trust of others to do their jobs accordingly.